This is Charlie Thomas of the Grifters. God bless you and all the street mics. Hi, this is Mary Wilson of the Supreme, and you're listening to my friend Mike Miller on the Harmony Street Show. And we just have so much fun. My baby loves me and Mike Miller. Woo! Hey, this is Mike Miller from the Harmony Street Show, and I have with me my really good friend and a legend in Southern Florida, and get to be a legend all over the United States and the world, Mr. Tommy Mara. How you doing, Tommy? Good, Mikey. How you doing? I'm doing great. You know, uh, you actually were born in Brooklyn like uh, so many talented people. A lot of good ones came out of Brooklyn. Oh, absolutely. Everyone that lives in Southern Florida knows Tommy Mara and his vocal range, and pretty much, uh, you know, we've been on stage many, many times together, and I, I know that uh, my feeling is that everything Tommy touches turns to gold. You just have that knack for drawing people in and getting involved with shows that are always successful. When did you get started, and how did you know that you could get up in front of people and carry a tune? You never, you know, you know, I mean, you're an entertainer, you, you just, you, you never know. It's, uh, I started nine years old and, uh, wow. kept moving on from there, you know, and, uh, one day I just, you know, I was a drummer and I came from behind the drums and pulled, uh, pulled the microphone out and said, time to carry in all these drums and set them up. <laughs> It's too much work. It's a lot easier just to be a singer. Well, you know what's really funny, too, is that most drummers that I know, not only being like the flakiest ones in the group, but most of them are not vocalists. You know, it's it's very rare that you find a drummer that's a vocalist because that point of reference is all about the rhythm and rather than, you know, finding the chord on the guitar or the piano, which is, you know, like really interesting. It's an amazing thing. Believe it or not, you know, I was a dean in a junior high school in the Bronx at Castle Hill for 30 years. One of my kids was Stevie Jordan, the drummer, and his mother, Gloria, used to come in and I used to take his drumsticks away in the lunchroom because he was he used to drum on everything. You know, he's doing paradiddles on his desk. The mother would come in and she would say to me, you're ruining my son's career. You take away his drumsticks like every week. And she said, he's going to be a famous drummer someday. And there you go. You know, the next thing I did was... Fast forward 25 years, and he's on the Letterman show, and he's playing with the E Street Band. So, you know, uh, drummers. So, uh, you moved to Southern Florida at what point? I moved in 1987. I moved over to uh, Spring Hill, Florida. You're in that area now as well, I, I would imagine. I'm still in the same area. Wow. Uh, just you know, started branching off. You know, I played, uh, played the Tampa Bay area for quite a long time. And then... Um, Started uh, doing the Dream Team of Doo-Wop, which right. is one of my uh, you know, one of my my names that I uh, trademark. Dream Team of Doo-Wop, Dream right. Team of Doo-Wop, rock and roll, you know. And um, just started getting into the doo thing. You know, I was doing really top forty when I first came down here. Right. Right. Because, you know, people say sometimes, well, you know, Tommy Mara, you know, he's a few years younger than the guys that are in, you know, that are 71 and 72 years old. And I come from the next genre because I'm 65 now. And I say to myself, it's really funny because the music was kind of passed down from decade to decade. And you know as well as I do, you either feel it or you don't. Because singing doo-wop, you either have it there or you don't. Some guys have fabulous voices, but they just can't sing that particular music. Uh, it's an amazing thing, you know. You were, once you start singing that, you start getting in with a couple of guys, and you get with a couple of guys who know what they're doing, and that bell starts ringing. Right, oh yeah. What happens? That bell goes off, and all of a sudden you know. It's I a know. gel. It's a, it's a gelling. I know, because, you know, how many times have you had four guys that are great, great singers in a room, and you get together, and it just doesn't blend because... Uh, because it just doesn't blend. I mean, you know, and... Just because, say it, Mike, just because they can't sing background. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. No. That'd uh, be nice. <laughs> well, I understand that, too. But, you know, what's really funny, too, is, like, in the old days, when I, I had an acapella group called The Islanders, we, we were on the best of acapella with Relic Records, and we were, you know, like 17, 18 years old. We'd get in the car and go to Jones Beach, and we'd never make it to the sand because, you know... We, they would stop us, we'd be in the tunnel, we'd be, you know, and they do requests, and you just chime, you chime off and you sing it. It was like, you know, then you get with other groups that say, we're not doing that tune until we've rehearsed it for eight months. <laughs> so it's funny, you know, but uh, 
Let's come full circle and, and talk about the legends. I mean, I've been watching the legends through their metamorphosis, you know, for many, many years, and they are never better than they are right now. Uh, Pauline and I were at the uh, Sunrise Theater in, in Fort Pierce, and, um, you know, it's just like silk. It just rolls off, and whether you guys are doing a 20-minute show or an hour show, it's all there. Well, we, 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 we try, and then, you know, you, we sing together so much now. We do so many shows that right. just, uh, we say, hey, listen, let's do Wonder Why. Uh, let's do uh, any any song. And we just start singing, and it's done. Right. We, we, the other day, we during that show backstage, we did just two kinds of people. We right. Did, we finished it. So now wow. the next show we can do just two kinds of people. Right. No, I understand. People don't realize that when you're sitting in the back of the dressing room, you're staring at the wall and you...